Well, are they beating the drums of war a little louder over in Syria? Have you ever seen the uh, satellite video footage of the destruction over there in Syria? You ever seen it? You ought to look it up and check it out. <clears throat> it is biblically, biblically becoming exactly what was foretold that it would be a ruinous heap. So these are some articles I'd like to go through. If you ain't been paying any attention. Headline. 350,000 Saudi Arabian soldiers maneuver. Are they preparing for Syrian war, are they preparing to go into Syria, actually, and join up with all their buddies? It's like I said months and months and months ago, this is just another Iraq and Libya deal where they want those leaders out so they can control those countries, put their puppet and pick leaders in that will do what they want. Let's go through these. Thousands of soldiers from regional countries are getting set to participate in a military maneuver. And this is the Saudi media it's saying around 350,000 for forces from the per Persian Gulf, Gulf Arab states and a number of other countries who remain unnamed in this article. They're going to take part in the Saudi-led military maneuver in the area of Afer al-Batin in northern Saudi Arabia. Now get these numbers. I already gave you this astronomical 350,000 force number. 2,540 warplanes, 20,000 tanks, 460 helicopters. The name of this is supposedly called North Thunder. It's going to be 18 days worth of these maneuvers. The airspace over northern Saudi Arabia will be closed. East Media here is saying this maneuver will be the largest throughout the history of the region. I've never heard of anything that had. Well, that doesn't mean anything. There could have been, but I can't recall just off the top of my head 350,000 forces worth. Egypt, Sudan, Pakistan. There's some names. Persian Gulf Arab states are among the 25 countries that will take part in these exercises. This maneuver comes at a sensitive time after Saudi Arabia announced readiness to participate in any ground incursion into Syria if the U.S.-led coalition decides to start such an operation. Well, well, well. Get the old House of Saud given the green light, huh? You're going to throw your hats into the ring? Hmm? You think? Or are you just going to keep paying the U.S. to do it for you? Saudi Arabia is a member of the U.S.-led coalition that has been conducting air raids inside of Syria. These airstrikes have been going on without any authorization from the Syrian government or a U.N. mandate since over a year ago in September, well, well over a year ago, September 2014. That'll be close to, what, a year and a half? Saudi maneuver is believed as preparation for a possible ground incursion into Syria. 
well, that that makes sense when you've massed that many troops and all that hardware up together. Reacting to a potential troop deployment, the Syrian Foreign Minister Walid al Mualim said Saturday, let no one think they can attack Syria or violate its sovereignty because I assure you any aggressor will return to their country in a wooden coffin. Pavel Krasheninikov, a deputy of Russia's state Duma, has warned Saudi Arabia that any military ground operation in Syria without Damascus consent would amount to a declaration of war. I've mentioned it before. And they don't talk about it much. There's treaties signed while, you know, years ago, where certain countries are bound by treaty that if one of them gets attacked, they def they help defend it. Now we all know that NATO's motto is. A strike on one is a strike on all. So we know that they're bound together at the hip. That little motto there kind of reminds you of the old four or five guys had a little run around gangs back in the day and if you mess with if you mess with one of us you're gonna have to take all of us on that kind of stupid crap okay 2540 warplanes 20,000 tanks that's a lot I mean that's not even counting the 460 helicopters. 20,000 tanks. That is just unbelievable numbers. To have that for a, a drill is just out of this world. <clears throat> so I think that uh, I think since Russia has got involved the United States is really pissed off about it again because Russia stopped the United States from taking Ukraine which Russia considers an you know an old piece of them not going to let you have it not going to be prudent ain't going to happen and it didn't And then we had, remember, the uh, chemical weapons that they tried to blame on the Syrians for using them on their own people. And Russia said, yeah, yeah, uh-uh. We got the goods on you. It was you guys that did it. They have been sticking a hot poker up the keister of the U.S. every time the U.S. tries to do something to get the world anti-sentiment against Assad. We in the Western media, it appears to me, are told that the bad guys are the good guys, and we're told that the, the regular guys, who maybe we could call good guys, we're told they're the bad guys. Remember, they always said Hillary Clinton was one. Other faces in the media have also said it's not if Assad goes, it's when Assad goes. So they're hell-bent on this idea of taking Syria. And now, it looks like they got the little Saudi brothers in on the act.
Well, this one here, Turkey, Saudi Arabia could launch an anti-ISIS ground operation in Syria. In Syria. Hmm. Saudi Arabia mentioned again. Then you got the old Turks there. Yep, when the old Russians got involved, then Turkey had to shoot down a plane. So they were a little back over there messing things up for everybody. This one says Turkey and Saudi Arabia might launch a ground operation against the jihadists of ISIS in Syria while Riyadh is also sending, there's the words again, warplanes to a Turkish base. If there is a strategy against ISIS in Turkey and Saudi Arabia could enter into a ground operation. Here we go again. Forces on the ground. Turkey is reluctant to take part in the fight against ISIS, but it, it is Turkey that's making the most concrete proposals, some say. Saudi Arabia, it's been added, has become an increasingly close ally of Turkey in recent months. Hmm. The Saudi officials came to the reconnaissance of the base. It's not clear how many planes will come. What it means is they're not going to tell you right definitively offhand a concrete number. And then the Saudis, also repeated in this, they said if necessary we can also send troops. Saudis are showing great determination in the fight against terror in Syria. Not just support for someone else doing it in Syria. <clears throat> Saudi Arabia and Turkey both see the ousting, here we go again, of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad as essential. That is essential for ending Syria's five-year civil war and are bitterly critical of Iran and Russia's support of the Syrian regime. Well, I'll take that into consideration how bitterly they are against that support. Because if Saudi Arabia is bitter against it, that has some meaning, huh? And then, got asked if Saudis could send troops to the Turkish border to enter Syria. They said, this is something that could be desired, but there's no plan. Saudi Arabia is sending planes, and they said if the necessary time comes for a ground operation, then we could send it. Yeah. Yep. Timing is everything, isn't it? Now, this is after Assad defiantly told in an exclusive interview published a Friday that he would recapture all of Syria and keep fighting terrorism. Turkey's relations with fellow mainly Sunni Muslim power, Saudi Arabia, have war warmed. Excuse me, they have warmed. Yeah, they're feeling the love again, ain't they? In recent months, ties had been damaged by the Saudis' role in the 2013 ousting of Morsi, a close ally of Ankara. In December, Erdogan visited Riyadh for talks with King Salman well as key decision makers, Crown Prince Nayef, and Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Meanwhile, the Turks have been tightening their relations with Qatar. Yeah. There's quite a few terrorists in Qatar, we know. Yeah. They're getting all cozy with them, too, huh? 
And on Friday, heard again, you know, the long several hours of talks with in, in Istanbul with Fatter's Emir, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Tani. But these contents of the talks was not revealed. They're secret. They're secret. You can't know. And we come to this one. It is set to get worse. Saudi Arabia says it's made a final decision to send troops into Syria. <clears throat> this article states that Saudi Arabia has made a final decision to send ground troops into Syria, cross the border and go on in to fight ISIS. How about really to join ISIS, the U.S. created arm, proxy fighters. This was said by the spokesman of the Saudi-led coalition force in Yemen. Brigadier General Hamad al-Asiri said that Riyadh was ready to join the U.S.-led anti-Islamic state coalition in Syria. He has noted, however, that the coalition which has largely targeted the militants with airstrikes has not given its final approval on the Saudis' decision to send ground troops. Oh. The coalition does not give its final approval. But this says, Saudi Arabia says, it has made a final decision. But said no final approval. We are representing Saudi's decision only. This was signaled last week for the first time. The Saudis would be ready to send the troops into Syria if its coalition allies U.S., Turkey, and the U.K. Can't forget about the U.K. Ask them to do it. The kingdom is ready to participate. We're ready to get some blood on our boots, huh? The boots on the ground. We're ready to participate in any ground operations the coalition may agree to carry out in Syria. Syria told Al Arabia TV News last Thursday. And it was reported later the Saudis may be prepared to deploy thousands of ground troops into Syria. But you had some experts that were right off the bat skeptical over how much the Saudis would really be willing to contribute to the fight. The Americans, da da da, red, white, and blue, are pushing the Gulf states hard. But to be clear, it happens at all. It's just going to be like support for bombing. It, you know, it's essentially just symbolic. Said the geopolitical expert Ian Bremmer, president of the world's largest political risk consultancy, Eurasia Group. Well, he also stated that the Saudis won't send significant numbers. They're already stretched with an uphill and losing struggle in Yemen. <laughs> How in the hell <laughs> do you lose in Yemen? <laughs> That's comical. Hey, you got a hell of a military there when you're losing in Yemen. And they won't want to be on the front lines of Saudi troops in Syria who would be fighting and killing other Sunnis. That would be unprecedented and enormously unpopular. Even so, Saudi Arabia's growing international isolation and the rising regional influence of its biggest rival, Iran, has led the kingdom to double down on protecting its interests. Protecting its interests. These guys have a way with words, don't they? 
This according to an analysis of the world's top 2016 risk released by the Eurasia Group. That also includes the kingdom's interest in Syria. Yes, they have interest in Syria. Where the Saudi-backed rebel groups are currently battling Iran-backed Shiite militias and Hezbollah forces loyal to Bashar al-Assad. Saudi Arabia is locked in two other proxy wars with Iran in Yemen and Bahrain. Saudi Arabia's relationships with the Iranians hit a new low in January after the execution of a prominent Shiite cleric, Sheikh Nimra al Nimra, leading to the Saudi embassy being set on fire and destroyed in Tehran. Then the diplomatic ties were cut off shortly after that. <clears throat> Yeah. Obama here, King Obama, had the response to the dispute. He was not as supportive of the Saudis as the kingdom would have hoped. Really? He kisses their ass at every time they bend over and expose it. He's on his knees, puckering his lips up. Indeed, the Saudis continue to balk at the U.S. decision to lift nuclear-related sanctions on Iran. Washington has shown few, if any, signs that it intends to prevent Syria from becoming a Russian-Iranian sphere of influence. Hmm. As such, just as Russia intervened in Syria under the guise, oh, here it comes, of fighting ISIS to project its own power in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia may use the fight against the group as an excuse to enter Syria's battlefield. There you go, cross the border, go on in, and take the task of containing Iran's expanding influence into the region into its own hands. They are so strong. Yeah, they're fighting a losing battle in Yemen, but they're going to take this into their own hands over here. Because they're so good. Everybody's looking for the Americans to step up. And the U.S. isn't going to do a fraction of what the Russians are prepared for militarily. Oh, well, this is set to get worse. Here we go. The Russian Prime Minister, Medvedev, he has warned that foreign intervention in Syria could spark a new world war. Uh -huh. So we have different forms of information. We have a little stuff here it says they have made a final decision to put troops on the ground in Syria we got this one here in Syria and then of course we got this one here with these gigantic numbers of this supposed Exercise North Thunder. So, I think what we can read into this is that they are going to mass all this hardware and forces. Now, whether they're going to cross on over there and get into the foray, what we can say for positive 
And if they do that, Russia's not going to stand still, are they? If they ain't playing with the big toys yet over there when what they're doing now, if these big numbers actually get in there on the ground across the border into Syria, Russia's going to break out the big toys. The big toys go boom. And they kill a lot. And they turn buildings into rubble. I mean, any other buildings that aren't already on the ground, they will be paced. Crumpled. Broken into bits. And how will the United States respond to this? Well, <clears throat> we're already sending forces over into that Middle East again. It was already announced recently that King Obama stated that he's going to send some more guys over to Afghanistan, right? Anybody remember what the old boy says when he campaigns? About we got to get out of there. We've got to bring the guys home. We train these people, and then we leave, and then they're on their own. Well, he lied again for all you little bummer lovers. He's not bringing them home. In fact, he's sending more. So you'll have more troops over there. And they'll be able to be transported over there to Saudi Arabia. Over in the northern part. Yeah, then they can make their way inside of Syria. And everybody can be one big happy fighting force. Our forefathers said no foreign entanglement. For those of you that cannot understand what foreign entanglement means, that means don't leave the ground of your own country and go into somebody else's country, which is not yours, and become entangled in conflict. But our psychopathic leaders over the last several years pay that no mind and they have us for their own evil, satanic, power hungry, money grubbing, warmongering reasons entangled in conflicts all over the place. So I think, like, um, well, I guess Salenti said this before, but I, I thought the same thing. If you want to get rid of somebody's leader that bad, why don't you challenge the leader to a fight yourself? Winner take all. Televise it. Sell tickets to it. If I kick your ass, you have to step down. If you kick my ass, I have to step down. That way, we don't get a bunch of dead soldiers. But instead, they sit back here, safe and sound, and send everybody else's relatives off to die or to be maimed. They give you all these legitimized reasons on TV why we have to do this, why we have to fight. You have to keep up the fight. When you become entangled on someone else's soil, when you kill their child, their mother, their husband, their grandparents, their brother, their friends, people that they love, they grow to hate you. You came as an invader 
from somewhere else and you killed someone they loved. So they will want revenge. And if that means coming over here and killing some of our people, do you get the drift? Not all of this war of Islam versus Christianity Christianity is 100% religious. You throw in the political aspect of it, of why it's being manufactured. And then you throw in the individual aspect that someone you love was killed by someone who invaded your land. And then you say, hell yes. And it makes things even worse. If we would get the hell out, come back home, mind our own frickin' business, and concentrate on our own business here on our own land, not run around the world killing everybody's loved ones, maybe they'd like us a little more. Maybe that would uh, make this war between these Islamists versus these Crusaders a little less likely to occur, even if they did want to build a caliphate again. But you give them reasons to want to kill you, then they're going to want to join the guys with the muscle of the caliphate. Guys with the muscle that got the guns, the rockets, they got some tanks. You just said, gasoline to the fire and make it burn brighter and hotter. Well, we should all be paying real good attention to this. Real good attention. Because it's my gut feeling that this is this astronomical number, along with all those huge numbers of the hardware they're bringing, that this ain't going to be no just, you know, just practice run maneuver. You got to get some practice in, boys. We'll just bring. <laughs> 150,000 short of a half a million. Yeah, right. Well, I think they I think they're going to try to bull rush it. With what it looks like to me, it looks like a bull rush. It looks like a they're just trying to put together something of overwhelming force to where they can take them down. Where they can take Assad down, where they can take the Russians out. But the Russians aren't stupid. You want me to tell you something about the Russians? If you haven't figured it out, they are very loyal to their homeland. They're very patriotic to their homeland. Those, those fighters, those Russian fighters, they are trained very well. Not to put our U.S. forces down, but I, I'm saying they are as good as, and, and with the shape our military is in now, they're, to me, they're probably better than we are. And if these are articles that I'm going over there with you and discussing things with you, putting out what I think and feel, I don't even have access to the real intelligence reports like these countries' militaries do. We don't have that. So 
The Russian knows what they're going to look at, and they're going to they're going to counter it. And how they'll counter it? Well, that's for their guys to draw up a counter plan. But I wouldn't put it past them to, to uh, you know, if it's war, hey, war is blood and death and guts. So to say they would not use tactical nuclear weapons, that is something I would not say, because I think that they would. If somebody's going to bull rush you, then you're going to have to pop them hard. How do you take out a lot of guys with something precise that takes out a lot of guys? You do what the other guy don't think you'll do. But I'm pretty sure these guys would do tactical nukes. I wanted to bring you up to speed on that, in case you ain't been seeing none of these articles. So I, th I said um, for our economy and stuff, and even even for this oil, I've spoken to some guys at work about that. And I, th I said March, I think, is going to be a key month. And now that I've been <clears throat> digging into this, I'm going to put it in the same time frame. I'm going to put this into March. And I'm going to say March is a very key month. So be paying attention because whatever happens over there, it's going to affect you over here. Of course, they're, they're going to plaster you with the election crap everything else they can to get you to watch something else and not pay attention. So tune in what's important. Tune out all their garbage. God bless you. Keep you safe. You'll hear from me soon.